So one way of thinking about the Learning Futures Collaboratives is to think about a child who's born today. A child born today is going to enter the world of work 24, 25 years from now. If you think back what the world was like 25 years ago and what it is now, clearly we have no idea what that future is going to look like. So in some fundamental way, education is really always about the future. But I think that we are at a point now with sort of the range of global challenges that we face, whether it is global climate change, the rise of technologies, uh, surveillance capitalism, artificial intelligence, the pandemic is being one example of that. Uh, we look at migrants and refugees and the different contexts in which education can happen. You realize two things. One, we don't have a clue what that is going to look like. Second, none of these challenges can be addressed by one discipline. So the idea of the Learning Futures Collaboratives is essentially that, which is how can we bring groups of scholars, experts together, and which, you know, is there a better place to do it than the Mary Lou Fulton Teachers College, where we have an amazing array of scholars and doctoral students, but working sort of in their silos. So the Learning Futures Collaboratives tries to bring people together around big, important questions in education that we would not be able to address or even think you know intelligently about through a narrow approach so essentially we have five groups right now who have picked up i would say some of the biggest challenges that we think about in education everything from global sustainability to how we can reimagine reimagine the the american high school to how we can bring futures thinking as a into the k-12 curriculum um, from AI and education and so on. So it's, it is truly a way to think about research in a new way, in a collaborative, transformational way. I think this is a really good time to experiment with these transformational learning futures collaboratives. Um, one reason is that we're still, we're still not out of the COVID pandemic. Um, and that really had a huge impact on education on our society and on how we think about the, the issues that are facing us um, globally, locally, um, as a country. I think we didn't realize before how unprepared we were to respond to things like children not being able to go physically to school every day, to how to train teachers to pivot really quickly, to think differently about how learning happens across different contexts. So, so it opened our eyes, I think, and created this opportunity for people to say, we need to think differently. We really can't just keep doing what we're doing. Um, I think it also created a real enthusiasm on the part of our faculty for coming together in new ways um, that probably didn't exist before the pandemic. One of the things I've seen um, and heard from faculty, um, in particular at the opening kickoff event that we had this past Friday, um, was a real, a real eagerness to be in the same space with people and connecting around these larger issues. One of the more compelling aspects about the LFCs for me is the idea that we're focusing on these larger issues. As academics in education and beyond, I think we've become very used to narrowing our gaze, to focusing on problems and questions that we can appear to address through rather narrowly focused, traditionally structured research studies and that can be summarized in, you know, a 30-page journal article. The kinds of issues and problems that uh, faculty and students are addressing in these LFCs are not going to be addressed in a 30-page research article. These LFCs are intended to be long-term, um, to involve sustained work over time that will touch on and draw in the work of many different people. Um, I think another thing that's exciting about them is that the the participants in the LFCs, even at this very early stage, are not confined to faculty or even just faculty and students. Some of the LFCs are both drawing on folks from different units across campus, but also from the community. Um, in fact, we've got plans to work with other universities and institutions across the world. And that, I think, is going to be you know, super exciting and really help us tackle these issues in ways that are going to be 
impactful. I think the point Betty made about sort of new forms of research, I think it's a really mm -hmm. important one. I think that we have come to realize, though I don't know if it's universally accepted, that the standard forms of research that we do where we study educational systems, you know, and then usually the conclusion is we need more research. You know, I don't think that system works anymore. We have to figure out ways because there is knowledge and expertise that we are bringing to the discussion. But we really haven't figured out what the avenues are and and that how we can widen our gaze, so to speak, to talk to like genuine large global issues. And for that, I think we need new paradigms or new ways of doing research, new ways of thinking about research, thinking of research, not just as knowledge generation, but as knowledge application, right? So how do we think about research as a design field, which is always out to improve existing situations, right? Um, so I think there is underlying the sort of Learning Futures Collaborative, I think there is this bigger idea that through these conversation and collaborations, maybe we can offer some models of what this new forms of research can be. One of the conversations we've been having um, at the leadership level in the college is how to transform the ways that we carry out our roles as academics, including how we assess our success. And what we've been moving towards is a questioning of the model of the individual scholar, you know, perhaps supported by their team of students or doc students, who is functioning as sort of a lone star in the field, you know, building the, on their own, you know, relatively narrow um, field of expertise. We want to bust that open. Again, because these problems are so big, that's not how we're going to address them. We want to think differently at the college level and throughout about how to support the idea that collaborative work is valuable and necessary. How to help people work well with each other to draw on different forms of expertise and in some cases have to learn different languages. How to come to think in different ways about their work. And I think that's super exciting. I mean, frankly, as someone who's been in educational research for quite a few years now, I think I'm really enthused. I think this is, um, we're at the point where we're going to engage in something that's a lot more transformative than I think I've seen in decades. I think we've got the tools to do it now. I think we're going to be building on efforts that have been already started by different scholars in different places, not just in education. Um, I think in the institution at large, things like bringing together artists and scientists to both communicate the results of research differently and think about different ways to conduct research. Bringing together uh, people with folks who know about different sorts of technologies as ways of transforming the use of technologies in education um, and in research. Mm -hmm.